The doors to the Viridian Tea House are open once more. Hello everyone, good to see you again. So apparently I have more books that I've read and I can't keep up with making the videos. I thought that once a week was good enough, but no, it's going to be several times a week. So be prepared, there's going to be an influx of Viridian Tea House videos that I'm going to throw at y'all. So let's begin. <laughs> Oh, so again, um, just another announcement that uh, the Wheat Ridge Farmer's Market, I will be a vendor every Wednesday. The hours have been extended from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, the Golden Farmer's Market, it begins on June 3rd, I want to say, but my first date is not until June 17th. And I also have an, up an upcoming Magic Maker's Market on June the 11th. And as it gets closer, I'll post the, uh, the days and I'll talk about it more. But anyway, um, I've got some great books and a great tea to talk about. So without further ado, let's begin. And sorry again about not having my screen, but I'm kind of liking this whole, you know, open air. I don't feel so claustrophobic. And you can see I'm a very eccentric person anyway. All right, so the first book, I uh, give a shout out to Arapaho Library. Yay! It's just so funny. So I was just in there uh, about 30 minutes ago picking up yet another book that I had on hold. And two of the librarians were sitting at the table and I walked by and I said, I spend more time in here than I do in my own home. And they're like, oh, you know, and I said, y'all are enablers. Y'all are really enablers. And, uh, but they laughed about it. So it, it was a good, uh, a good, a good time had by all. Anyway, so the first book is written by a woman that I've always respected. And now after reading this book, I respect her way more, like 158%. This is called The Book of Hope by Jane Goodall and Douglas Abrams. And for those of you who don't know, Jane Goodall is, I mean, she is the, She's an amazing, amazing woman. And I had no idea that she is in her 90s and just as sharp focused and driven and creative and a spectacular soul, truly. So anyway, this is The Book of Hope, A Survival Guide for Trying Times. And this was a good read in, in today's climate of the world. Um, so on the back of it, it says, uh, this is what Jane, uh, this is Jane talking. She said, probably the question I am asked more often than any other is, do you honestly believe there is hope for our world, for the future of our children and grandchildren? And I am able to answer truthfully, yes. This book gave me hope. You know, I, I've... I've attended a lot of online lectures and book signings and book discussions and just philosophical discussions about the way that the world is going these days. I mean, it just seems like everybody's angry, everybody's frustrated, everybody's anxious, everybody is just impatient. And I'll be honest, like sometimes I, I, I would get a little down about that. And then I would see just a random act of kindness or I would do a random act of kindness, not expecting a thank you, not expecting any kind of gratitude, but just saying there's good in the world and I have hope. And the, after reading this book, I, I, I believe it even more so. So let me read the inside dust jacket for you. In a world that seems so troubled, how do we hold on to hope? Looking at the headlines, the worsening climate crisis, a global pandemic, loss of biodiversity, political upheaval, it can be hard to feel optimistic. And yet hope has never been more desperately needed. In this urgent book, Jane Goodall, the world's most famous living naturalist, and Douglas Abrams, internationally best-selling co-author of The Book of Joy, explore through intimate and thought-provoking dialogue, one of the most sought after and least understood elements of human nature, hope. In the Book of Hope, Jane focuses on her four reasons for hope, the amazing human intellect, the resilience of nature, the power of young people, 
and the indomitable human spirit. I, I like that word, indomitable. And she, both uh, Douglas and Jane like the word as well. Drawing on decades of work that has helped expand our understanding of what it means to be human and what we all need to do to help build a better world, the Book of Hope touches on vital questions, including how do we stay hopeful when everything seems hopeless? How do we cultivate hope in our children? What is the relationship between hope and action? Filled with moving and inspirational stories and photographs from Jane's remarkable career, the Book of Hope is a deeply personal conversation with one of the most beloved figures in the world today. I just, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, I, it, it does get hard sometimes in, in this world we live in. I mean, it's crazy, it's fast paced, you know, people want things done yesterday. People are gonna yell and scream at a retail worker because they, they forgot to pack one extra wine glass or, or something like that, or, you know, road rage, or, you know, hearing about more and more animals that are becoming extinct or they're, we're killing them through pesticides. And yeah, it, it, it does get a little heavy on the heart. It really does. And a lot of times it's just like, why not just be apathetic? Why not just say, you know, look, who cares? I'm just a meat popsicle. Thank you, fifth element. And I'm going to die. So doesn't matter. Why should I care? You should care. I know I care. I care very much. Like um, whenever I'm taking a walk around the lake near our house, it's just, I, I'm, I'm amazed and, and full of wonder at seeing the different, the different plants, the wildflowers, the, the, the birds, uh, seeing a beaver, you know, it, it's just uh, seeing an eagle, seeing fish. It, it makes my heart feel full of happiness and like Jane says, hope. And to see just random strangers helping each other out or sitting down and just having a conversation, even if you don't agree, but just, I respect you, you respect me, we respect ourselves. We may not agree at this point, but let's just sit and talk. And uh, I've just learned about the, the art and the power of conversation. And you can get a lot more accomplished with just both people being adults, sitting down and saying, okay, let's talk about this. Or um, planting a tree or looking at the um, dandelions in your backyard and not treating them like weeds. I mean, I know some people, they don't want the dandelions in their backyards, which actually a little side note. So I've become so fascinated with dandelions that I'm starting a little research project called the Dandelion Project. And I, I am so curious, how is it that once upon a time, dandelions were considered to be a delicacy. You know, you put them in your salads. And I was talking with one of my best friends the other day and she was saying, yeah, I remember my mom would go outside and pluck a couple of dandelions and put them in our salads. How do we go from that to, oh my gosh, they're weeds, we have to kill them, kill them all, to now, oh, they're good again. So I thought, you know, there's a ton of information out there. I would just like to find out the truth. And so I started this dandelion project and I've been taking photos of dandelions because I feel a connection. You know, yeah, some people might think, oh, it's a weed, who cares? I care. And maybe from that caring of dandelions, there's gonna be like a ripple effect that other people might, I don't know, might take up uh, planting an herb garden or having a bird feeder or just having a conversation with someone over tea. But anyway, the long and the short is this is a book of hope and it makes me feel hopeful and it makes me know that there's more good in the world than we than we are made aware of, I think. You know, I'm not trying to be naive, but I just reading this book, I, I feel like there's more good in the world than than we know about. So for The Book of Hope by Jane Goodall and Douglas Abrams with Gail Hudson, forgot to mention Gail's name the first time, 
get a good look at that book. It receives Viridian Tea Houses, five pots of earth friendly tea. Again, I truly did enjoy this book. I enjoyed reading about the four aspects of hope. And um, yeah, let's just, if, if you happen to read this book, please email me teagoddess74 at gmail.com and let me know what you thought of the book. I know I'd love to start a discussion. So once again, thank you to Jane Goodall, Douglas Abrams, and Gail Hudson for the book of hope. Thank you so much. Thank you. So the next book, um, there's a little short story behind it. I actually, so I'm a volunteer with the Denver Public Library and I uh, help out with the monthly pop-up book sales. And so far it's been wonderful. And talking about hope, I have had some of the coolest conversations with random strangers and that we're all book lovers, we're all book hoarders, and you never know what somebody's gonna say to you or inspire you to be like, oh, you know, I've, oh, this customer didn't want this book, but they were telling me about it, so sure, I'll give it a shot, you know, for a dollar or whatever. So at the last book sale that I did, I was kind of straightening up and getting ready for the book sale when I discovered A Trail Through Leaves, The Journal as a Path to Place, by Hannah Henchman. This was actually placed in one of the children's books boxes. And I was like, this isn't a children's book. And something about the cover just drew me in. And I don't know if any of you know, but I, I, I'm very much into journaling. I've been journaling ever since I learned how to write. And uh, I remember my first journal was a Hello Kitty diary. And I wish I could find it because it, it's, I've come such a long way, but I have had probably hundreds of journals. In fact, I've got several back here on one of my bookcases, probably like about 10, 10 or 20 journals. But this book puts, kind of adds a little extra to the art of journaling. So if you're into journaling and you're finding a, a creative slump or you're sitting there staring at the paper going, I don't know what to write about. This book is a nice little guide for you. So let me read the inside dust jacket. To Wyoming artist, writer, naturalist, Hannah Henchman, the blank pages of a journal are a clarion call to awaken the soul, to celebrate being alive in the world, to get to know both the wilderness of our inmost selves and the unpredictable and potent natural world. Fueled, as High Country News editor Chip Rollins wrote, by quote unquote, enough curiosity for a herd of cats, Henchman's astonishing ability to observe unfolds a myriad of wonders. The pattern of a bee abdomen, the opening of a fireweed seed pod, water's effects on a landscape and the colors of trees in different seasons varieties of grasses, ice forms, sky colors, as well as the comforts of home, the joys and frustrations of a backyard garden, and the vibrant lives of pets and other animals. Henchman's respect for the miracle of our five senses and her passion for what they can tell us about the world is contagious, and it really is, it's contagious. Start with a smell like a crushed marigold leaf, the sea, coal smoke, she advises the would-be journal keeper, and from such raw materials begin to decant the stuff of life into journal form, where it remains fresh, still tasting of its source. Writing and drawing in a journal, she abundantly proves, is one way to live more fully in the present and discover what in the world one wants to make one's own. For ultimately, the act of recording a life is also the act of creating a life. And this is so true. Like I said, you know, I've been journaling for years, but reading her suggestions, you know, go for a walk. And then when you come home and you journal about it, don't say, I went on a walk and I walked for about 30 minutes. No, say things like, I heard this strange bird call. So I tried to locate the source and I saw a beautiful cardinal and it kind of looked at me and I looked at it and then it flew off. Or, wow, there's so many worms on this trail. You know, I hope the birds uh, don't see them or maybe they'll get a nice meal. But just to take in 
your world, the natural world, using all five of your senses and to put it on paper and watch your life begin to blossom and bloom and grow. So I highly recommend A Trail Through Leaves for anyone who is a, is a what does she call the term? A journal keeper. If you are a journal keeper or uh, if you're trying to get into the art of journaling and you don't really know where to start, if you can find a copy of A Trail Through Leaves, I highly recommend either checking it out from your library or buying it from a bookstore or from Amazon. This is this has a wealth of knowledge. And I like the fact that she even gave a nod to uh, Thoreau and Walden. And if you've never read Walden, I highly recommend that too. Yes, there's a lot of backstory behind it, but to get the gist of what he was trying to convey, read Walden. It, it, it's not a bad book. And you might find yourself underlining a lot of passages and maybe transferring it to your journal and turning it into poems and, and sketches and, and so on and so forth. So A Trail Through Leaves, The Journal as a Path to Place by Hannah Henchman. Get a good look at that. Receives, of course, Viridian Tea House's Five Pots of Nature Loving Tea. I truly enjoyed this book. This was a delightful surprise. And like I said, if I hadn't have been straightening out that box of children's books, I never would have found this book. And my life, I mean, I, I, I try to take in as much as I can whenever I go on a nature walk, but this is more like, it's almost like, like, uh, like Shinrin Yoku. For those of you who don't know, Shinrin Yoku is the Japanese art of forest bathing. And in fact, one of my tea blends, Nature Walk, is inspired by Shinrin Yoku. But it's almost like she's taking Shinrin Yoku and then saying, okay, You've bathed in the forest. You've taken everything in. Now put it out onto paper and treat it like art. So yeah, I, I truly enjoyed A Trail Through Leaves. This was, this was a lovely, quiet, beautiful, natural surprise of a read. So thank you very much for this book. So now we're gonna get to the tea portion. And today's tea is surprisingly from uh, King Supers or Kroger. It's the pomegranate, blueberry, and acai, oops, <laughs> flavored green tea. Forgot where the, there we go, yeah. So the reason why I was kind of laughing about this is because, you know, yes, at times I will freely admit, I can be a tea snob, I, I, I really can. May not be the greatest thing in the world, but sometimes I really am. And then sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised, like with this pomegranate, blueberry, and acai um, flavored green tea. You know, a lot of people would say, oh, you know, I don't do tea blends. Or, oh, you know, don't you know that for tea bags, it's the CTC method, which is crushed, tear, curl. It's, that method is mostly used for tea bags. And yet, so the ingredients... Yeah, well, yeah, the ingredients are green tea, hibiscus, orange peel, natural flavor, don't really know what that is, but you know, dried pomegranate, dried blueberry, and dried acai. I hope I'm saying that right. I know there's so many schools of thought on how to pronounce that, but you would think, oh, you know, this is probably not going to taste good. This is going to be cheapy. But let me tell you something, this is actually one of my go-tos. I, I, I enjoy this, especially uh, during the spring and the summer. And I've got my lovely, oh, I don't wanna, I don't know if you can see it without me trying to pour it on my desk, but it is a lovely deep purple color. Let's just, can you see the drips? That really doesn't help, does it? Anyway, <laughs> I tried, I'm sorry. But this is a delicious, mouthful, exciting blend. It truly, truly is. And it's not going to cost you a lot of money. So if you have like a Kroger or one of the affiliates, like we've got King Supers, try the pomegranate, blueberry, and acai flavored green tea. I mean, it, it's, it's not bad. It really isn't. And it's 20 bags. So if you are not able to enjoy tea at home for whatever reason, you can just stick one of these bags in your bag and just 
drink it whenever. So here we go. Yep, doesn't disappoint. Full of flavor. I don't feel like I'm getting gypped. Um, my mouth is not puckering up, which is interesting because I've had some teas where it's like, oh, it's so frou-frou and it's so, you know, highbrow and I couldn't drink it. I was like, what, what, this is, this is not happening for me. And yet I paid two fifty dollars for this and my mouth feels fantastic. I feel like I'm doing my body some good. And you know, we all know green tea is good for you anyway, plus not to mention pomegranate, blueberry, and acai. I mean, you can't go wrong with this. That's just lovely. That 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 is absolutely lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So that is all I have today. Um, like I said, I got a lot of books over here. You don't want to see the pile, but just get used to these videos because I got more coming. But much thanks to Hannah Henchman, uh, Jane Goodall, Douglas Abrams. Thank you for the books. And also thank you to Kroger King Supers for the delicious tea today. And let's end with our breathing meditation. So um, the rules the rules are one make sure that you have a cup of your favorite tea or a glass of water with you find yourself in a, in a comfortable position either seated like me standing up or laying on your bed we're just going to focus on breathing this is not about focusing on a mantra or, ch or uh, um, chanting we are just here to breathe just take a few minutes out of your busy day and breathe now having said that your mind is not going to clear of all thoughts. In fact, your thoughts are going to come rushing at you. And that's quite all right. So just pause it, label it as thinking, and then send it on its way and then return to your breath. It kind of strengthens your meditation muscles in a way. A meditation guide that I follow from time to time said that. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. So we're just going to breathe for a number of counts. And then we're going to end with a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. When you begin, you can either close your eyes like I do, or you can like soften your, your focus on an object in front of you so that you're not too distracted. But above everything else, this is all about just taking a break and breathing. That's all. So just don't forget to breathe. So if you're ready, make sure you got your tea or your water. And let's begin. Now as we end this breathing meditation, take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Slowly open your eyes and allow your eyes to come back into focus. And then enjoy a sip of your tea or your water.
That is truly delicious. That's an excellent blending of the different ingredients. So thank you once again for watching this video. And if you like what you see, please give it a thumbs up or and or comment. And if there's something that you'd like to see that I haven't talked about yet, please send me an email. So that's tgoddess, T-E-A, goddess74 at gmail.com. I want to hear from you. Let me know if there's a particular tea company I need to try or if you are an author and you'd like for me to review your book on this lovely channel, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So that's all I have for today. And as always, take care of yourself and each other. Raise your teacup high. And just remember to drink tea is to enjoy life. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.